Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video, I really, really want to get those Dune emissions back home. We are at the window, so we should be able to do it. Let's see if we can do it. First, Scavenger 1, which will be the more difficult one because Ike has to be in the right position for us to leave directly out of Ike and go into solar orbit to... not solar orbit... Uh, interplanetary orbit to come back home. So we have a fair amount of Delta V, it should be enough. But what we want from Ike is if we take a look at the orbit, we're going back down this way in order to get into a lower orbit. Uh, is that 75 degrees? We need the gap between Duna and Kerbin to be 75 degrees and that might be a little bit far. But anyway, so we, we're trying to go back down this way. So we want Ike to be over here. I think <laughs> that's my that's my theory and I'm sticking to it um, so we're gonna be wobbly 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 maybe maybe around here oh we've lost communication oh no electric charge um, this has solar panels like that okay well we'll wait until the solar panels get our charge back okay now we're getting our charge back all right so mm, like that. That's what you want. And so we'll eject out... Ah, we should have done it earlier, alright. We should have done it over here, but we lost power. But it might not be too bad, let's see. Very little Delta V used here so far. We just really want to go straight out this way. That's a little bit better. How's that doing over on the Earth's... Uh, sorry, Kerbin side, jeez. Okay, well that's only 500 that we need, so that's positive, but uh, not focus view, set us target. The phase is a little bit off, so we'll have to adjust our maneuver. Well, I think I can get to the right place. If we spend a little bit more. Yep, there's an encounter. Well, let's see what we can do to make this ideal. Well, that's pretty good right there. We can manage the rest of it. That'll be prograde around Kerbin. Not that that makes a huge difference at the moment. Let's see how much delta V it takes to capture around Kerbin. I mean, could we just manually capture? That's a good question. That would potentially simplify things. It feels like a little bit too much. Let me see. Oh no, that's pretty light. Yeah, we could manually capture around Kerbin. Uh, if we correct the inclination a bit, we might be able to plan our descent and come back down to the KSC. That would be nice. So, okay, we've got this encounter plotted and we know when we want to go. Let's uh, roll a bit so that we get proper power. Taking a look out at our exit direction. We're sort of askew because we needed to correct for the timing. And so we're going out that way. Not great. Um, it would be more efficient to go out this way, but our timing is a little bit off. So, in other words, the time for the transfer window is a little bit off. If we waited a little bit longer, it'd be better? I don't know. We are meeting at that descending node, so that's good. Okay. And go. Yep. Okay, well, we'll need to do an RCS touch up there. Yeah, I mean, our orbit is nowhere in sight on this, so let's just cancel that for a sec here. Take a look at that. RCS on. Um, SAS doesn't need to do anything. We overburned a bit. You know, honestly, that's so much that I think we might want to give the main engine a little puff in order to take care of it. Okay, so there we go. Definitely just did too much of a burn, actually. Completely useless moon encounter. Let us do go on the prograde side, just in case we want to make use of that. Okay. 
So... Well, for now, let's do that. And I'll plot a mid-course adjustment so that we can flatten our orbit to make it easier to get to the KSC, if possible. Tentatively, I'll keep it out of the atmosphere, I think. Just barely. So that's flat. That's perfect. One meter per second. Okay. And what we want to do is recharge, but right now... Uh, the sun is behind Ike, and we've got 487 meters per second to work with when we get get back home. We could use that to capture, we can use that to land safely, it's possible that we might need it. There are things we might need to do, we'll see. But let's get on with uh, Duna Mission 3, bringing Jeb back home with a whole lot of science. Okay, um, well we've got review stored data there. Is there anything left in the lander? It does not seem to be. That says log seismic data temperature and pressure. It doesn't say review data, so that's all clear. Uh, Jeb is... Well, let's see, transfer crew. Jeb is in there, okay. And it's a full tank. And we've got a little bit of RCS, but we don't really need it. So, alright. I think we're ready to go then. Undock. Granted, that leaves Bill here with no ability to use SAS and limited control of the thing, and it doesn't have a reaction wheel. So we might need to like rescue Bill to get Bill back. Uh, we we're in this orbit, and Bill probably needs to get to Duna Mission Two. And that's a bit hard from this orbit, to be honest. And there's only 125 meters per second. So yeah, we might have to send something to rescue Bill. But we'll get to that later. First, let's fulfill our actual missions. We we never got to do that equatorial orbit of Ike. It cheated us of that. But we should be able to bring back the science data from Surface of Duna. We should be able to uh, get the blueberries and Duna Stone back and the space plane has those modules. So, where do we want to leave? Well, we, we're in this polarish orbit. That's not the easiest orbit to leave from. So we're just gonna have to feel it out. Um, we're going that way, so maybe a maneuver right here will do. That'll fling us out this way. Uh, that's not really the way we want to go. <laughs> Uh, let's see, more like, we, we do want to go more like that. We want to go along the purple line, specifically. So maybe even at our pinnacle over the pole. I feel like this is sort of horrible, because look at it, how it's going there. So, I mean, the timing is really off. We're over here when covering this there. That's not what we want. Maybe we need to just do an inclination burn. Then that's closer, but we're sure pushing it. Then again, we don't need to reserve any fuel or anything. So let's see. A combination of prograde and inclination. I swear, this is looking like one of those situations where I always think that I bring too much or overdid it. And the game finds a way to make me use all of it. And sometimes more. Well, we have an encounter, but you can see how much of our Delta V we're using. Uh huh, okay. There's probably a better way of doing this, but if this works, I'll take it. So that's pretty close, and how much excess velocity do we have? In other words, how much beyond carbon escape are we coming in with? To get an idea of how hot we're coming in. We're coming in hotter than the space plane. But not by much. Just 258 meters per second extra. So, so it's okay. As far as our heat shield is concerned, I mean. Uh, but, yeah, that's costing a lot more than I thought it would. But we'll take it. The chip can point at the maneuver node. And it's mostly an inclination burn. Look at that. So what we're doing right now 
is a burn like this. We're going like this and we're, we're trying to go out like that. So the chances that this ends up being precisely done is at least the burn time seems fairly low. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But we're trying to go from going polar like this to going more straight out so that we can actually hit Kerbin reasonably. But yeah, it's a messy business. Carrying a lot of science here. Okay, and burn. I mean, we're basically on time. Let's take a look. Okay, so that's our orbit coming in at Kerbin. Oh, not bad. Could be much worse. So this won't need a mid-course adjustment or anything. And we'll aim for our normal 26 kilometers. That'll do. Okay, so 26 kilometers and we are recharging. Seems like that's good enough. All right, so we are recharging. Jeb's on his way back home. Let's go to the tracking station. The first one that will actually arrive is Jeb with Duna Mission 3, and that suits me fine. Uh, I'd like to wrap up with whatever happens with Scavenger 1. So that'll come in in 81 days and Duna Mission 3 in 76 days, but we have to do this mid-course adjustment first. Well, one meter per second. The mob propellant should handle it. Okay, well, all right. That looks okay. And it depends on whether we want to capture high or not, but now we're on our arrival path and double checking how much it would cap take to capture. I mean, that's a bare capture only. 130. If we wanted a tighter capture. I mean, do we want a bonus moon encounter? I don't know. But... Yeah, I mean, it depends. We could just error break without even doing this burn to capture. But the one thing I don't want is to end up in the water, so... Yeah. <laughs> could be that we want the option to not come down straight down like that. But anyway, first, Jeb. Jeb has entered Kerbin SOI. Let's take a look. Well, we still have the same periapsis, so proceeding. Okay, at this point, it is time to get rid of our trunk. Should have maybe put the RCS thrusters up here so we recovered them, but anyway. Verify our periapsis, that's fine. Okay. Separation. And surface. Retrograde, parachute, let's retune that minimum pressure, here comes Jeb. We've got some heating. Okay, we're through the thick of it. And we are over water because there's no difference between the two altitude readings. Are that or remarkably flat land. There is, I believe, some land over there. Okay, parachute. Okay, I really shouldn't fizz warp while when we splash down, but okay. Recover vessel. All right, 1,391.1 science earned. It's a lot. And Jeb got some experience. We landed pretty far away from the KSC, so the pod didn't get back much. So putting the RCS on the pod probably wouldn't have made a big deal anyway. So did we get the contracts? We got science data from Surface of Duna. And we got the blueberries and Duna Stone. All right. And why don't we unlock some technology? Specialized control? Well, might as well. I mean, I don't know. I don't need it, though. Yeah. 
I don't... Those mob propellant tanks are okay, but... I need the nuke. Give me the nuke. Resource scanner, though. We need to get in on that sort of business. So, maybe, yeah. Let's get that. And then the little probodobodyne octo could be good for some things. Hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll save the rest for later. We've unlocked a few things. We'll think about what we really need. Let us work on our space plane, which is only a few days away from coming in. Okay, so here we go. Scavenger 1 is in Kerbin SOI. I have decided that we should try for an arrow capture, but only lightly. I'm gonna go with 50 kilometers and see what that does for us. 51 kilometers is fine. If that doesn't do enough, we'll use the engine to do the rest. Okay, here we go. Much trepidation. Uh, let's, well, we'll wait for closing the cargo bay because we need the power. With my luck, we just won't have, like, comms or something. We've got a really, really big dish in here, but... If we've got line of sight issues, there's nothing that's going to solve that. But we should have enough stuff around by now. With the moon and nothing seems to... We don't. We haven't gotten anything near Minmus. I mean, that's strange. But alright. Now, if Duna was any indication, this thing will basically want to nose down pretty sharply. I mean, it'll want to point prograde instead of doing something shuttle-like. We'll have to work on that at some point, but for now, I'll just assume that that's the case. Okay, well, we're in the dark anyway, so let's close up. I just want to go in belly first. We're not trying to be very aerodynamic about this. We just want to present as much surface area as possible, and maybe it'll force us down. Maybe it won't. We'll see. Got aerodynamic surfaces, but maybe not strong enough aerodynamic surfaces. Uh, yeah, it's it's already forcing us nose down. I can't really lift it. Ooh, ooh, heat, um, brakes. Oh. Well, maybe I can lift it now. Please don't blow up. Please don't blow up. Oh, it blew up. Just a nose cone. I should pick a better nose cone. We've got no communication because of plasma. That is another flaw. I don't have any way of counteracting the plasma blackout. Well, it's on its own right now. We haven't quite captured, but we did slow down a bit. Oh, we have communication now. Well, we're lighter by a nose cone. I guess I picked the wrong nose cone. Okay, I'm gonna try and flip to our tail so that we can retro burn. Okay, we have a capture. And let's bring it down below moon orbit. So it didn't seem like it did that much delta V for us. The 51 kilometer height. Just want to clear the moon here. We'll do further passes. We're at 42.5 right now. Let's just see what it does for us. So, coming back around. Conical tank might suffer, though. Eh, it's just pitching down. I can't... Stop it from doing that. And we've lost comms. Got land down there. Okay, we are going up now. We didn't lose that much velocity, still. We could probably do another pass like this without it deorbiting us. So... 
KSC is right here, but given our current orbit, it'll pass right by. Okay, here we go again. I'm trying to take my time with this. I really wanted to succeed here. Uh, we've had communications throughout so far. So maybe the plasma situation is not so bad, but it sure looks bad. I mean, but we still have comms, so okay. Okay, well, if we can get to a nice, clean one-hour orbit, that might be convenient for planning purposes. Right now, the KSC is about five hours from our periapsis. We really want it a little bit ahead of our periapsis. We want it over here. So, if we can delay for maybe six hours, that might be helpful. We probably want to lift our periapsis and wait a little bit. I don't really want to land at the in the dark though perhaps we'll lift our periapsis somewhat just to bring that apoapsis down lower so that we can potentially land on the daylight side but it's gonna be tough actually so okay we're at apoapsis and i'll lift my orbit a little bit the periapsis a little bit so that we just make a light error breaking pass let's say 50 ish kilometers yeah, it's very much a lawn dart kind of deal, as far as its ability to stay away from prograde. Doesn't super duper want to. Well, we've maintained communications throughout this pass, but it was a pretty light pass and it didn't do enough really. I've had this sort of pattern before with other things doing multiple air breaking passes. Can't say that this is any less harrowing than the ones in Realism Overhaul. Um, we'll go a little bit lower. That was definitely not adequate. Oh, we lost communication this time. Hmm, and it's pitching up more than before. Interesting. It's not really plasma-ing. Maybe we're just in a bad location. To be honest, what I really want to do is land on land. And actually, the KSC is not the, be not the best place for that. The best place would be this stretch here, rather than the KSC. That's a very thin continent. This is a much thicker one. Okay, let's hold off on that. And then at Apoapsis, we'll boost it up. And then we're going to try and time our landing. But it is a question whether I want to try for the KSC or whether I would just prefer a really nice large stretch of land. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so that's a 100 kilometer periapsis. Uh, we'll keep it like that, that's about 100 kilometers even. I sort of want to land here. I think this will be safer. That's Woomerang launch site. Woomerang for KSC was what we were doing. And if we take a look at the gap between KSC and like the dessert launch site, we can't make the dessert launch site because of the inclination, but um, that's about right. Let's point retrograde. We're not in a very standardized orbit right now. I guess temporarily I can open the bay for power. So here we go. We're going to try and bring down, not in any to any runway, but at least to land, hopefully. Okay, well that's it. We have negligible delta V remaining. I'm sure everything's gonna work out perfectly. We are in the atmosphere for keeps this time. I hope it's not those mountains. <laughs> We should be able to use aerodynamics to divert in that case, but geez. Eventually, the desert launch site is going to be in line of sight. That might be enough. But could be that I lose communication completely. We don't have a satellite directly overhead right now. That was bad planning on my part. I'm going to try to tilt a little bit south to get to the desert launch. So no, it's not working at all. <laughs> I don't feel any sense that this is going to be able to do that. 
Yeah, well, we're not gonna turn that much. But perhaps we can at least turn enough so that we can maintain communication with it. Oh, we're already way past. Um, any chance for communication with something else? I don't even know. If, I think we ran out of land too. Maybe I shouldn't turn this way. Right now it says Comsat 5. Where is Comsat 5? Oh, back there. That's not good. <laughs> Are we gonna accidentally get all the way to... KSC? I don't think so. Maybe I should take in the air brakes to try? Well, we're gonna try and cross the pond at this rate anyway. And we've lost comms. Uh, this doesn't look great for actually getting comms back or anything. Well, now we have comms. What do we have comms with? Oh, the dessert launch facility. Well, that's not going to last very long, is it? Shoot. And we've lost it. I should have lowered landing gear while I could, just on the off chance. If the moon had a relay satellite that we could bounce off of... Oh, speak of which... Moon Station! Thank goodness. Okay, so we've got a bounce off of Moon Station. I'm gonna try and descend now. And we want to go over there. So let's do that. Moon Station should give us pretty good comms for a while, actually. And now for our favorite thing to do, which is dead stick landings. Well, time for locked camera view. Even at this descent path, we are slowing down. It's crazy. But of course, now we don't have a nose cone either. Still. I might as well get the landing gear out. I don't think it'll rip off at this speed. I don't know if it rips off at all anyway. I think we want to have the parachute separate from those SRBs. They can't do anything, but just in case. Uh, it's a little bit bumpier than I thought it was going to be. And we're on the ground. Oh, bounce a little bit. Got brakes out. Brakes. 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 Uh, oh, I lost something. Phew. Okay, well, we lost uh, one of those Elvons. I guess we'll call it an Elvon. But overall, not bad. Not bad at all. Alright, well we missed the continent I was aiming for, but we ended up closer to KSC anyway. 79.7% .7 back. No crew. We did get a little bit more science. And contract-wise, we recovered those two modules. So, we did our Duna duties. And next time we will see what I do. We've got a healthy amount of money. And... They mainly want Moon and Mimis stuff. There is this uh, Melric and Melric's craft from Ord of Ike. I guess eventually we can recover Melric. Why not? Um, There's a uh, Kerbin Orbit rescue, but it's a good way. Oh, rescue Elon from Orbit of Minmus. How can we resist? I mean, I, I'm, I'm shocked. We got an Elon Kerbin. I mean, we can't uh, possibly pass up on that. Okay, so we'll take that. We might as well make it a combo with that Daftry. Okay, so maybe some rescue, maybe some other things. I'll think about this component. That's a big component though, 5.4 meters. We can't fit that in our space plane, so maybe we'll pass on that one. Uh, we'll see. Alright.
Yeah, that can't even use a regular heat shield. We'll need one of those inflatable heat shields for that. But I am almost surprised things worked out as well as they did. So I better quit while I'm ahead. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.